for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff up the Mad Cheats as always. Got my top 10 cheats video. This is a video I do every year. This is the top 10 tips, tricks, and cheats you probably don't know about for offense, defense, and special teams that will help you win games. As always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go and get right into the video. Now, the first trick isn't necessarily going to help you in gameplay, but it's definitely pretty cool. I'm going to show you guys how you can basically go through any menu system in the game on a lot faster pace, whether it's online in the marketplace uh, on your mutt team or just picking a team before you go into head-to-head. -head. I'm going to hit the down stick on the left with both controllers at the same time. You can see they pretty much go at the same pace. But if I start hitting the left trigger repeatedly... <laughs> You can see it goes through the menu on the left side much faster. And that's something you can use in just about any menu in the game. I mean, if I'm just going down here, you can see it's a pretty slow pace. But if I want to go back up top real quick, I just basically hit the left trigger a bunch of times. You can see the speed difference. Another cool tip when it comes to the functionality of Madden that I get a lot of questions about in my videos is how do you respot the ball in practice mode without actually hitting start and going to respot the ball in the practice menu? It's really simple. All you have to do is hold in the left trigger and push in the L3 button or the left stick. If you do that really quick, you can see how you basically get free functionality to move the ball anywhere you want on the practice field. Next up we'll go over special teams. Most people don't know that when you're kicking long field goals like this, to increase the range of your kicker's foot, all you have to do is pull the left stick down towards you and you can see it dramatically increases the length at which my kicker has a chance to hit this field goal. Now it's really just up to me to hit the power all the way through and you'll see how this goes from a kick that would have most likely fell into the end zone to a kick that went right through the uprights. Next up, we'll go over extra points. Most people don't know that the closer you get to the 100% marker when it comes to kicking, the faster the meter drops when it comes back down. To correct this, simply don't let the meter get past the dark blue area and it'll come back down at a much slower pace, making it much easier to kick extra points and short field goals. When it comes to kickoffs, if your opponent has a wedge block set up, the best way to take care of this is to essentially hit stick the first blocker. You can see right there, we go right through the blocker and are able to tackle the running back. A better method when it comes to kickoffs, however, is kicking to the fullback. All you have to do is pick kickoff in any direction, it doesn't really matter. Then you can hit the Y or triangle button so you can kick it in the sky and direct it towards the fullback, which is typically right in front of the return man. Then I'm going to kick it at about 60 to 70% power and you're going to see how the ball goes right to the fullback every single time. A lot of people know how to do this. It's really something that gets used quite a lot. But ultimately, if you're returning it with a fullback, they're never really fast enough to return it for a touchdown. And you can see you can catch them pretty short most of the time anyway. When it comes to punt returns, one of the best return methods can be done with any punt return formation. But I'm going to go with return middle here. Basically, all you have to do is take one of these outside rushers, pull them back, once the ball is snapped, switch to one of the defensive tackles over the long snapper and pull him back. And you see how it essentially gives you five blockers in your punt return coverage, where typically you only have four. That one extra man can be huge and will give you the best opportunity for the biggest punt return possible. Next up, we'll do offense. Did you know that there's actually different styles of blocking when it comes to passing plays? If you pick a play that's intended to be a long pass play, the blocking will actually hold up much better. You can see in the diagram here, they have these elongated dropbacks. But if you pick a play with a much shorter design, like the slant stick, which is really all short routes, you can see the blocks are only meant to hold up for so long. You can pick plays that are even shorter that are meant to be like screen plays, like the PA bubble over, and you can see they basically just hold their position right away. It's important to know this because if you're trying to throw deep on a play, but your blocking is set up like this and it's only going to hold for a short amount of time, you're probably going to end up getting sacked. So try to pay attention to what your offensive line is designed to do on any given play. You can also predict where the pressure is going to come from as well, where plays like this, typically the defensive tackles get off and the, the outside defensive ends get held up. As you can see here, all the defensive tackles got free. Whereas a play like the four verticals, which is a deep drop passing play, you're going to see how the pressure typically comes off of the so you can pretty much predict where the pressure is most likely to come from based off of the diagram of your offensive line's blocking scheme. Next up, if you're in a passing situation and you don't like the way the things are looking mid-play, don't feel like you have to throw the ball into a bad situation or throw the ball into a crowd. Just push the R3 button or push the right stick in and you will safely throw the ball out of bounds, which is always a smarter move than throwing an interception. 
Next up we got Playmakery. Now Playmakery is something that basically you can control the closest receiver to you. Whether it's a running back, a tight end, a receiver, doesn't matter. It's the closest receiver to the proximity of the quarterback. If at any point in time you want to basically send the nearest receiver up the field, you can do that just by hitting the right stick in whatever direction you want them to go. This is really useful in man coverage, but it's also really useful in zone coverage if, say, your opponent isn't getting any pressure. You can basically just redirect traffic until you get an open man by using the right stick in any direction you want the receiver to go. Another good tip is how to hide your audibles, whether it's flipping a run play, uh, making a hot route adjustment, or basically changing plays entirely. You can do any number of these things while walking to the line of scrimmage uh, as your quarterback. You can make one adjustment that your opponent will not see. Like right here, basically I'm just gonna flip the run to the left. Now you can see the quarterback isn't even set, so there was no animation showing that I flipped the run play. Or if you're running a play that only requires one hot route, you can essentially make that hot route before your quarterback ever gets set and you can see your opponent will never know whether you're making adjustments or not. Normally when you try to make these adjustments after the quarterback is set, you get a number of animations letting your opponent know that you're making changes. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. So this here can be a giveaway, especially if you're passing, because a lot of times you have to make more adjustments when it comes to passing than running. So doing this is definitely a good trick if you only have to make one adjustment. Next up, when it comes to hot routes, the most popular and most utilized hot route in the game is probably just a simple streak route. A lot of times streak routes are really used to get other receivers open because they don't necessarily get open by themselves. On the defense here, I'm looking at a cover two zone. You're going to see how this streak route essentially gets pushed into towards the safety in what's called a zone chuck. Nope. Now what people don't know is there's an easy way to get around this zone chuck by simply putting this B route on a fade instead of a streak. You can see how the arc diagram changes from where he's going straight into the defensive player to where he's basically going out and around the defensive player. Doing this and doing it from a hash mark to the open side of the field like I am now, you're gonna see how this receiver will essentially get outside of that cornerback and basically get him open up the side of the field, which he otherwise would have been covered. Next up, when it comes to routes, there's not a glitchier route in the game than the delay fade. This next play here I'm gonna show you guys, the PA fork is easily my favorite play in the entire game. You can see it average 42 yards a play and I've called it 400 times. The route that makes this play so glitchy is the delay fade that the tight end is running, which essentially looks a lot like a drag. There's different types of delay fades you can do. I mean, you have it in your option. At any point in time in the audibles, you can put this tight end on delay fade, but by basically just hitting up on the right stick. All you really have to do in a play like this is put this B route on a streak, and this play here, because of this delay fade, will be a one play touchdown against any single defense in the game. And it all has to do with the fact that the, the cornerbacks, the safeties are all kind of waiting for that route to develop. Next up, we're going to do defense. Now, if you're in a formation or you're in a playbook like the Seattle Seahawks that don't have a single traditional cover four play, that's okay because you can actually turn these matching cover four concepts into a cover four play with one simple trick. So I'm going to go ahead and pick any of these cover four, cover four quarters, or cover four palms. If you guys don't know what the difference is between cover four quarters, cover four palms, and cover four regular, which is essentially a regular zone drop, it's all about what the safeties and the cornerbacks are doing. A lot of times in regular cover four zones they just kind of drop back into land and get behind them when it comes to cover four matching principles like this a lot of times they act closer to man coverages where they'll uh, basically move out of their area completely to follow a receiver now if you want a regular cover four you can create it out of any cover four palms or any cover four match in the game simply by going to your adjustments click on secondary which is the wire triangle button for xbox or playstation and then hit sticks which is the lb l1 button on xbox or playstation now this coverage here will essentially turn these deep zones away from the matching principles. You know, see no longer are these zone coverages running wild and you can see it's just completely different coverage. So while not every formation and not even every playbook has a traditional cover four in it, all you have to do to have a cover four in your favorite defense is find a cover four quarters or cover four palms and play sticks and you can have a cover four in every defense in the game. Next up, we're probably going to go over one of the most important things when it comes to playing mobile quarterbacks and that's that's the R3 right click button. At any point in time, if a quarterback looks like he's going to take off or run out of the pocket, if you want the nearest defender to react to that quarterback, 
all you have to do is push in the right stick and you will see that the nearest defender will leave their assignment completely and go after the quarterback. Did you know you could run commit on every single play? All you have to do is pick a play where there's only three rushing down linemen. Hit down the right stick to hit run up the middle. But if you run commit from a play where there's only three down linemen rushing, you will get all the benefits without any of the penalties. So essentially, if your opponent runs, they will all run commit. If he passes, they will all drop back like it's a normal play. Next up, when it comes to getting sacks and getting pressure, probably one of the most important things to do in this entire game is gap stacking. Gap stacking typically means taking your user and hovering over a gap to pull an offensive lineman so that you can get a free rusher. You hover that area for a short amount of time so that the guard or the center thinks that you could most likely be blitzing, then simply just drop back into coverage and at that point typically the free rusher had time to get in and get a sack. So that's it, that's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man, my shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.